healthy. In order to get a good TEM image, we need to have a good TEM sample as well as good beam conditions. In this unit, we're going to talk about how to align the electron beam in the TEM to achieve the optimum imaging conditions. In most of the cases, all you have to do is to bring up some pre-existing setting. On this Tech9 TEM, um, what you have to do is to click on the 4100 extraction voltage and click on set, it will bring the TEM into a really good condition. Make sure you do not click on update or delete. If you click update, the current setting will overwrite the uh, pre-existing setting. If you click on delete, it will remove the pre-existing setting. As a TEM microscopist, I'd like to introduce you a little bit more details how we do beam alignment, even if the pre-existing setting does not exist. Before we start our TEM session, we need to make sure the TEM vacuum is in a good condition. The column vacuum should be below 15, and right now it's 15. The status right now is column valve closed. So to open the gun valve, what we do is we click on the column valve's closed button. You can hear like a hissing and a clicking sound. The status changed into ready. In most of the cases, the TEM is left at the SA mode at a fairly high magnification. In order to locate the beam, we use the magnification knob and reduce the magnification down to the LM mode, the low mag mode. The TEM grid we use is a copper grid, so let's find an area that contains nothing but vacuum and increase the magnification. Now we just switched from the LM mode to M mode. As we increase the magnification, we're entering the SA mode. When doing the beam alignment, we do from top down, basically from the gun to the condenser lens, then to the objective lens, to the projector lens. The first beam alignment we're going to do is the pivot point alignment. In order to access the pivot point alignment, we exit the setup tab and go to the tune tab here. Under the direct alignments, you see beam tilt PPX, that's the pivot point X, and the beam tilt PPY, that's pivot point Y. So we click on beam tilt PPX. The default setting for multifunction X and Y uh, for image shift in X and Y directions. However, if we activate the pivot point, now we can see for both multifunction X and Y, they have changed. Another thing to pay attention to is when we do the pivot point alignment, we usually use a magnification slightly above 100K. In this case, it's 125KX. When doing the pivot point alignment, we converge the beam to a very small spot, center the beam, and activate the pivot point X. You can see the beam now wobbles, and uh, the alignment is actually pretty good. If I purposely make that bad, you can see these two spots, they uh, deviate away from each other. The idea is to bring them as close as possible. This is in Y direction, and now correcting it. Now it's in a pretty good alignment condition. After the alignment, we simply click Done to exit the alignment interface. Then we repeat the pivot point Y alignment. The next step should be the condenser aperture alignment. On the screen, if you converge the beam and the center the beam, then spread out the beam. You can see the spreading out is not concentric. That tells us the condenser aperture is slightly off. In order to center the condensed aperture, we exit the Tune tab and go to the Search tab. Under the Apertures window, we can see we have Condenser 1, Condenser 2, Objective and Selected Area apertures. What we are going to do is to select the Condenser 2 aperture, click on Adjust. When we clicked on the Adjust button, now you see the multifunction 
x and y, they control the aperture position along x and y directions. In most of the cases, when we center the beam, we use the beam shift, which is controlled by the trackball. Uh, now let's converge the beam using the intensity knob and the center the beam using the beam shift. Now the beam is at the center. Um, let's spread out the beam. You can see the beam doesn't spread out concentrically. So what we do now is we click on the adjust button next to the C2 aperture, the condenser 2. And the multifunction changes to aperture X and aperture Y. We use the multifunction knobs to center the beam. After centering, let's deactivate the control by clicking Adjust again. Under this setting, if you converge the beam, the beam should sit at the center of the screen. And when you diverge the beam, you can see the beam diverges concentrically. To access the condenser stigmata, we go to Tune. And the first window here is Stigmata. We click on Condenser. As we click the condenser tab in the stigmator, the multifunction X and Y now changes into condenser stick X and the condenser stick Y. As we converge the beam, we can see it's elliptical. So what we do is to play with the condenser stigmators X and Y to make that as circular as possible. Now it looks pretty good. Uh, on the screen, it seems to be elliptical. It's because of the projection. But on the phosphorus screen, uh, it's actually circular. When we diverge and converge the beam, we don't really see too much stretching anymore. After correcting the condenser stigmatism, we click None to exit from the stigmata. In today's unit, we mainly talked about three components of the beam alignment or microscope alignment. We talked about the pivot point correction, the condenser aperture alignment, the condenser astigmatism correction. There are actually a lot more in uh, the microscope alignment or beam alignment, including gum tilt and gum shift, but this will not be a major part of today's tutorial. In most of the cases, if you can follow today's beam alignment, you can usually get pretty good bright field or dark field TM images, assuming your sample is good 